October 22nd. Let's get into the news. Friday's generally pretty slow on news, but we do have some things to talk about today. We got a trailer for the Grand Theft Auto, uh, the trilogy, Definitive Edition, uh, where all of the uh, Grand Theft Auto is featured in it. Looked pretty good. We watched it in trailer time. I think people that are a fan of those Grand Theft Autos are going to be excited for the lighting boost. Should be good. Should be all right. I'm not the biggest fan, though. Uh, there will be a standalone version of uh, GTA San Andreas Remastered going to Game Pass on November 11th. Uh, and GTA 3 Remastered will be going to PS Now on 12, uh, what is that, December 7th. So, you got that coming out. Game Pass continues to get its stuff. PS Now continues to get its stuff. Uh, Nintendo has announced that Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, which I believe is their remaster uh, of Advanced Wars 1 and 2, uh, will now launch uh, in spring 2022. It has been delayed. It was originally supposed to launch on December the 3rd. And now you gotta wait till spring. So what the fuck does, what does Nintendo have coming out this uh, this Christmas? What's the big Nintendo game this Christmas? Metroid? SMTV? Uh, is, oh, wait, when's that Pokemon game come out? That Pokemon game probably going to make all the money. That's November. So Pokemon and uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Yeah. Okay. I get that. I get that. That makes sense. We'll make enough money off of that. Next Wednesday, the Sony State of Play is back. It'll be happening at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Uh, CEST. And what are they going to show? Uh, I'll be watching this solo, most likely. It takes place an hour after Drop Frame ends next Wednesday. Uh, they said they're going to be focusing on announcements and updates for upcoming third-party releases headed to PS5 and PS4. The show is going to be about 20 minutes or so. We'll also uh, share new looks at previously announced games, plus a few reveals from our partners around the world. Hmm. Maybe Final Fantasy 16 there. We we thought Final Fantasy 16 was going to be at uh, Tokyo Game Show, but it wasn't. So maybe it shows up there. Don't know. Don't know. But they also, yeah, uh, Big Walter brings up a great point in chat. They might not talk about that to to highlight Final Fantasy 14, and then wait till uh, early 2022 to show that stuff. Depends. Depends. Uh, the Stardew Valley creator and developer Concerned Ape announced a brand new game yesterday called Haunted Chocolatier. Uh, we watched the trailer during trailer time. It just looks like Stardew Valley with a different premise. Uh, you make some uh, chocolate and you go to like a different area and fight and there's like a town and yeah. It looks very chill, very relaxed. Uh, looks like a lot of people will lose a lot of time to it. And uh, that's fine. I think uh, Concerned Ape, I was about to say Chocolatier Ape, that's not his name. I think Concerned Ape uh, is rich behind beyond his wildest dreams. And uh, if he wants to make that game, more people would probably appreciate a little bit more Stardew Valley type stuff. And he'll just get richer and richer and then probably buy a house in uh, LA for like 3 million, 2.7 really to be exact. And people might get upset if that goes public, but who knows? Who knows? Who could say? The Darkest Dungeon 2 Early Access trailer came out. We watched that during trailer time. Animation and lighting looks on point. Looks fantastic. I don't necessarily know about the gameplay loop this time around. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to figure that out as it launches next Tuesday. Uh, it is worth watching, though. Definitely go check that trailer out. You can watch it during trailer time. Or just go find it uh, on uh, Red Hook Studios YouTube. Um, what else do we got? Now, I don't know who these people are, so we're going to have to read the press release. The Molasses Flood Video Games Development Studio has joined CD Projekt Red. 
Okay. What is this? They are the U.S. based developer, the Molasses Flood. They were founded in Boston in 2014 by former Bioshock Halo Guitar Hero and Rock Band series veterans. They are known for survival and base building games, The Flame and the Flood, and Drake Hollow. Who? What? Uh huh. Flame and the Flood was good. I've never heard of it. Drake Hollow was fun. Okay. People in chat know the games, I guess. They seem they seem very uh, small though. Uh, quote: We're always on the lookout for teams who make games with heart, says Adam Kasinski, president and jo uh, joint CEO of CD Projekt. Uh, the Molasses Flood share our passion for video game development. Their experience quality oriented and have great technical or technological insight. I'm convinced they will bring a lot of talent and determination to the group. That's an odd acquisition, in my opinion. But I don't know anything about that group. The, the dev team, the molasses flood. So who could say they're in a weird spot right now. I really wonder what CD project is going to look like, you know, two years from now. I think the Witcher is going to get a ginormous boost in uh, December with season two. That game will probably sell a fuck ton. They'll probably announce Witcher four or something off the back of that. Uh, or at least that would be their plan. I don't know if they can now with cyberpunk being in the state. Cause like in a lot of ways they have to still finish cyberpunk like that. I, I think to say that game came out would be a lie. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to convince me that it did. So I suppose we'll see. I suppose you'll see and we'll see Do they really need to finish it i think so if they don't finish it uh they lose like i feel like uh the credibility meter is at like one percent and if they don't finish it it hits zero and it's never going to be gained if they do finish it it bumps back up into like the 30 to 50 range and then they could start like rebuilding that reputation um but it's gonna be tough the internet never forgets, right? They never forget. So now I don't know what this is. I'm going to read the headline uh, and then we'll jump into, I guess, the press release. So Paizo, which is the company behind Pathfinder, I think. Maybe let me verify that Paizo Pathfinder. That's correct. Okay. Uh, they have officially recognized the first and only tabletop RPG union under the CWA. I don't know what any of that means, but unitedpaizoworkers.org uh, announced today, uh, Paizo leadership has voluntarily recognized our union. This is the first step in a long journey now that United Paizo Workers is officially representing Paizo employees. We get to elect a group of representatives to sit down with reps from Paizo's executive team and the CWA to start negotiate, uh, negotiating. Voluntary recognition is an act of good faith on Paizo's part. That's cause for celebration. Now the real work begins. In order to enact major changes in the workplace, we need to negotiate our first contract with leadership. One of our goals is to increase wages to better match the cost of living. living. And that is likely to be the first topic we tackle. Following last week's announcement of our un unionization, even more Paizo employees joined us. Now we need to talk with our newer members and make sure all their voices are heard and representative, uh, represented. You can join our adventures by engaging with us on social media or through our website or by purchasing UPW merch. But like, what is the... I don't know. I mean... I don't know what this means apart from them potentially hoping to secure, you know, better things for the employees. Is it just good PR? 
Better wages and work conditions? Okay. Yeah, I hope it works out. I hope it works out. <clears throat> it's a union, simple. It's true, Caplerker. It's true. I'm just generally um, ignorant to the uh, the benefits of that. Um, my experience with union unions is not necessarily a positive one uh, because when I would work at uh, different trade shows and convention shows, um, it was a fucking nightmare when it came to the fact that like, hey, can I move that table over here so we can have the mixer closer uh, to, you know, the production board, et cetera? No, don't fucking touch that. If you do that, we'll get sued to oblivion. We have to get Bob over there when he finish, finishes his lunch break in like an hour to come move that table. Because if you touch it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So those are my experience with unions. And they're rather ignorant ones uh, to speak honestly about it. But yeah, I hope the I hope that helps out the, uh, the Paizo employees. Get some better wages and uh, working conditions and all that stuff. We'll see how it goes. Sorry, the dog's being crazy. What else do we got? Terraria and Don't Starve are getting some crossover content. Uh, it's been teased. I don't necessarily know exactly what that means. I can't believe Back for Blood has already been out a week. I feel like that was a month ago. Good Lord. I think that's kind of it, chat. Do you guys have any uh, key chat alerts that we need to go over here? A short JPNN for the day. What do we got? We got SMT5. We'll have nine day one DLCs. Nice. Did you hear about the New World Gold duping from... Uh, let me... Okay, hold on. We got to Did you hear about the New World gold duping from the server transfers? No, I did not. I do know that, uh, I do know that there was, I saw, it was kind of a bad look. Let me see if I can find the tweet. <clears throat> yeah, here's the tweet. Um, I'm not going to say who this is from, but it's, uh, someone within the Amazon workspace, uh, not necessarily Amazon, someone within that ecosystem, uh, let's say a Twitch employee. Let's go there. They tweeted, uh, character transfer didn't work so well. I can't add friends. I can't post on the auction house and progress rolls back to the transfer point when I relog. So that's pretty bad. That means that like anything they go and do, no matter what, when they relog, it just gets re-rolled back to when they transferred. Oh boy. Kinda wild. People realize they can just send all their money to someone, then re-log. So people basically capped out money doing that. Why the fuck are you guys still playing this game? Stop. There's so many other games coming out to play. That's so stupid. Stop playing that fucking game. That's crazy to me. Holy shit. I mean that ruined the that's ruining the economy. That's crazy. Servers are just fucked. Weird. Wild. 
Insane. Uh, Jason Schreier. Who, who told me this? Let's see here. Uh, Yervin Galed. I hope I said your name correctly. Uh, Jason Schreier of the Schreier Shire said, Epic Games will no longer give employees alternating Fridays off, a policy it implemented at the beginning of the pandemic to improve work-life balance. Employees are upset at the change and say they hope the company will reconsider. Yeah. That seems like a thing that uh, that would piss off your employees. Policy reversal comes as a four-day work weeks are becoming a hot topic in many industries. Earlier this month, Square Enix Eidos said it was switching to four days a week. Indie game studios such as Bug Snacks developer Young, uh, Young Horses has also successfully made the switch. Yeah. I did like it. Epic's making some uh, some interesting choices. The idea that they're allowing NFTs after like their uh, CEO on Twitter said that they would never allow NFTs and like all this shit. By the way, make sure to use uh, MEJP when you check out over at the Epic Game Store. Four games like Darkest Dungeon coming up on Tuesday. Anyways. I think that's it for the news chat. I think we're going to call it. Stop playing New World. Jesus Christ. There's so many other games. It's wild to me. How are like how is that not blowing the fuck up on the internet? I haven't I didn't even know that. I, I haven't even seen people like talking about that. It's wild. It's wild. Because no one wants to talk about that game anymore. Or more likely, no one's paid to talk about that game anymore. Hit give me a do the symbol thing. We're out of here. See you, to, uh, see you Monday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.